Hi, I'm Frank Sacamandi. And I'm Jerry Kong. We moved to this town at the end of 2020 after spending two years sweating over every last detail of the forever home that we built. We made an intentional decision to move to this community for its park-like beauty, small town suburban feel, and most importantly, the fantastic schools. Frank and I were getting ready to start a family when we stumbled upon this fair share housing debacle. And we quickly realized that it would have catastrophic effects on our town and our community. We have been heavily involved for almost two months now, spending countless hours getting up to speed on everything related to fair share housing. On August 17th, 2021, the Township Committee unanimously approved a settlement agreement with Fair Share Housing. We have performed a quantitative analysis on this agreement, and we will use this analysis to summarize the devastating impact this agreement will have on our town. We also performed a comparative analysis of this agreement with that of several other towns, and we will illustrate the disparate and unfair treatment that Milburn has been subjected to. Since we do not wish to simply criticize without providing concrete solutions, we will present a better path forward. We all understand that, like it or not, every town has an obligation to provide opportunities for affordable housing. We plan to do a separate video related to the history and background on how we got to this point. But for now, we will focus on the current agreement, as we have a limited time window in which to act. Broadly, the settlement agreement consists of two parts the satisfaction of the Realistic Development Potential, or RDP, and the unmet need. In simple terms, the RDP is the amount of affordable housing units that can realistically be developed based on the amount of vacant, developable, and available land within the community. Several projects in the settlement agreement contribute to the satisfaction of our RDP obligation of 114 units, including the Upton, Wells Fargo, Annie Says, Silverman slash Woodland, and others. The unmet need is the remainder of the affordable housing obligation. In our town's case, this number is 1,262. Municipalities need not address the entirety of the unmet need. Instead, they are required to create and capture opportunities for affordable housing as they arise. This unmet need is normally satisfied via a set of overlay zones that allow for the construction of residential housing units with the requirement that 20% of the units are affordable and the remainder are market rate. Additionally, in our settlement agreement, we are also mandated to create 75 units of affordable housing in a 100% income segregated site to be located on the current DPW site. While investigating this, we came across an analysis by Glenn and Renee Paparian that computed the number of housing units that could get created in the B2 Milburn Avenue zone as a result of the proposed zoning changes mandated by the settlement agreement. Inspired by this, we calculated the total number of housing units that could be created in each of the remaining overlay zones throughout the town. We then conducted a comparison with the impacts of overlay zoning that was agreed to in other towns. To our knowledge, this information has never been previously calculated, and if it has, it has never been made public. Here we have a zoning map of the entire town, where we've indicated all six of the overlay zones. As you can see from the chart above, we have the total acreage of each zone and the proposed density from the settlement agreement. Using this, we have computed the total number of housing units that could be added in each zone, as well as the number of affordable units, assuming a 20% set aside. As you can see, this is a very large number. The total number of new housing units that could be created as a result of these zoning changes is 4,132 of which 886 would be affordable. To put this into perspective, based on the 2020 census data, Milburn has 6,730 households. Combining the 572 total housing units that will get created from the satisfaction of the RDP and the 4,132 units that could be created from the overlay zones, this would mean a population increase of almost 70%. Think about that number for a moment, because it is staggering. Increasing the population by two-thirds will radically alter the character of this town and it will no longer be recognizable as the Milburn that we have come to know and love. It will have a devastating impact on our schools and infrastructure, thus fundamentally altering our way of life. It is not hyperbole to state that this is an existential threat to our community. 
How could it be possible that the state government could mandate this level of overdevelopment throughout New Jersey? Well, the true fact is they aren't. When you go to arbitration with fair share housing, in addition to the RDP, you are negotiating the amount of units you need to satisfy for the unmet need. While we haven't found a single town that has had to satisfy 100% of their unmet need, what we did find is that many towns were only being asked to satisfy between 20 and 50% of their unmet need. Let's take a look at how Milburn's current settlement stacks up. As you can see, Milburn has been saddled with satisfying more than 70% of its unmet need. One wonders why we got such a bad deal. We initially thought maybe our town just had a really bad attorney or a really tough special master. And while both of these may be true, we took a look at another town that had Buzak as their attorney and Banish as their special master, just as we did. That would be Upper Saddle River, and they only had to satisfy 27% of the unmet need. They also did not have to create any 100% affordable housing project as part of their agreement. We looked at Rumson, which is another town that also had Banish as their special master, and they only had to satisfy 25% of their unmet need. We wanted to have yet another data point, so we took a look at West Orange, which is a town similar to ours in that they were hit with a builder's remedy suit. Their case is special in that they have an obligation to create additional units on a golf course only in the case that the golf course becomes financially insolvent over a certain period of time. If the golf course fails, they will be satisfying 54% of their unmet need. If it does not, then they will only be satisfying 46%. It is important to note here that they had Beth McManus as their special master, the same person who was brought in to allegedly advocate for our town's interests, but in actuality drafted the terrible plan that our township committee has approved. If you take a look at the 2018 housing element and fair share plan created by Paul Phillips, our town's planner for more than 15 years, you will see that we had proposed zoning overlays that would have addressed 24% of our town's unmet need. We argue that this plan should have been accepted by fair share housing because it satisfies the same percentage unmet need as many other towns. Moreover, if we updated the set-asides to be the now accepted 20% instead of the 15% in several of the zones, we would have satisfied 27% of the unmet need. This clearly does not seem fair to our town. We're especially disappointed in our mayor, a real estate agent, for not running comps on our settlement agreement versus that of other towns. One of the most basic tasks that a real estate agent must perform is to run a comp to see how one property stacks up against another. It should not have been too much to ask for our mayor to have run comps of our settlement agreement versus other towns' agreements. We have now summarized the current plan and its potential impact on our town. Let's discuss a better way forward. Ed Buzak, the town's attorney for this matter, is on the record as having misled our community by stating that the court had ordered the contents of the settlement agreement to be confidential prior to the township committee taking a vote on it. At the preliminary compliance and fairness hearing in January 2022, Judge Gardner vehemently denied that such an order existed. To add insult to injury, just one year prior in the town of Denville, where Buzak served in the same capacity, he led a public information session for all town residents explaining all facets of Denville's settlement agreement prior to their township committee approving it. If we had had the opportunity to learn about our settlement agreement, as Denville residents did, we may have had a completely different outcome. Therefore, we should all demand that the township committee fire Ed Buzak immediately and retain competent legal counsel that will fight for our town's best interests. The new attorney should go to Judge Gardner and explain that due to Buzak's malfeasance, our residents were denied their First Amendment rights to speak on this issue, and we therefore would like more time to implement an alternative plan that would be more palatable to our entire town. We should not be intimidated by Fair Share Housing's recent litigants' rights motion because it is merely a scare tactic. We have not yet had the final compliance hearing, so they cannot even rule on that motion until they find that we have not been in compliance. Furthermore, Fair Share does not have the money or the willingness for a long, protracted trial, especially since this would delay their stated goal of building as many affordable units as quickly as possible. It is particularly egregious that the current township committee has chosen to trumpet Fair Share Housing's litigants' rights motion, and we find it disgraceful that they continue to blame residents for being uninformed, 
especially given the abysmal job that they have done promoting public awareness. The Township Committee's actions are like a defendant siding with the prosecutor in a case where they are not guilty and are being pressured into accepting a guilty plea. In Fair Share Housing's litigants' rights motion, they characterize Milburn as being stuck in the locker room with the shoe on the wrong foot at a track meet while everyone else has already finished. This is incorrect and gratuitously inflammatory. In fact, given that Milburn had already adopted its 2018 housing element and fair share plan in an attempt to satisfy more than 24% of its unmet need, a level which we've seen is consistent with its peers, a more apt metaphor would instead be that right before Milburn finished a fair race, fair share housing decided to move Milburn's goalposts to be not only three times as far, but also on the other side of an ever-widening chasm. We believe that getting a temporary extension on our immunity shouldn't be an insurmountable task, especially once Buzak's misdeeds have been pointed out to Judge Gardner, who is already frustrated with Buzak's misleading statement regarding non-existent court-ordered confidentiality. In fact, the final compliance hearing was postponed by several weeks simply because Buzak would be on vacation. The next step in our path forward is for the town to fire Beth McManus and hire a replacement planner who will adhere to their professional obligation to advocate for our town's best interests. Once we do the above, we also need a tangible plan to approach fair share housing with to show that we are negotiating in good faith. We will now walk you through some alternate proposals that have a realistic chance of success. For example, if we keep the 9 Main Street project and change all overlay zones other than OR1 to 15 units an acre, and then set OR1 to 20 units an acre, we will have satisfied 71% of our unmet need. For reference, OR1 is the current site of the Hilton, located across from the Short Hills Mall. Alternatively, if we wish to scrap the DPW project, we could offer 16 units an acre on all zones other than OR1, and 25 units an acre in OR1 while still satisfying more of the unmet need than in the existing settlement agreement. These proposals would certainly address many residents' concerns of high and inequitable distribution of densities. It would greatly decrease density in zones abutting existing residential zones. Given that this satisfies more of our unmet need, Fairshare would have a difficult time explaining to the court as to why this isn't a better plan. We're certainly not advocating that this is the ideal plan. In fact, they should be considered the worst case scenarios, since they leave the town with slightly more housing units than the existing agreement, albeit with much more acceptable densities. However, with competent professionals, we should be able to properly negotiate our unmet need satisfaction to be more in line with our peers. In fact, if we have no choice but to build a 100% affordable development somewhere in town, then we should demand a significant discount off of our unmet need. I believe a realistic landing point could be 10 units an acre across all overlay zones for an unmet need satisfaction of 48%. This should realistically be acceptable because it is higher than the other towns that we've seen, and we are still including a 100% affordable development. These are just two ideas that we came up with off the top of our heads, but the Township Committee should really hold a series of open public forums where residents can freely exchange ideas about what they would like to see in a revised settlement agreement. Our town is home to some of the brightest minds in the nation, and we need to use our collective wisdom to come up with a better solution. The Township Committee may claim that it is too late, and that the deal is already signed. We've spoken to external legal experts, and they indicated that when you are dealing with arbitration cases like this, nothing is final until the final compliance hearing. In fact, we found in our research several other towns that made amendments to their settlement agreement. We have an opportunity to do something about it now. Given that we have evidence that our professionals were conflicted and incompetent, there's no reason not to try. In fact, if the Township Committee does not explore these alternative options, then it must be the case that they want this plan for themselves, as opposed to the best interests of our town. As we've gone through all of this and come up to speed over the past few months, we have been horrified by the sheer incompetence and deception that afflicts the current Township Committee. We've come to the conclusion that this town deserves much better, so I am happy to announce that I will be running for Township Committee along with Oyen Oalabi and together we pledge to restore competence and accountability to the Township Committee.
If you would like further information on any of the data that we've shown here, please go to oyenandfrank.com, where we will provide all of our data backups and sources. Additionally, if you would like to host an information session where we can go into greater depth on either our proposals or any other elements related to fair share housing, please reach out to us at contactus at oyenandfrank.com, and we would be more than happy to schedule a time to do so. Before we go, we would welcome sitting down and meeting with the current township committee and sharing all of our information so that we can proceed with the best path, path forward for our town. We are all residents of the same community and we'd sincerely wish to avoid a disastrous outcome. The next township committee meeting is Tuesday, July 19th. We implore all of you watching this to come and join us at the meeting and make your voices heard before it is too late. Thank you.